Okay, we're in Photoshop CS4 here, and I'm just going to give you a little overview on working with color spaces. Um, we'll divide this up into basically three primary color spaces, Pro Photo RGB, Adobe RGB, and sRGB. Now you'll notice that the visible spectrum is probably this large and elongated space. And so Pro Photo represents our largest space in this case, in that it represents this triangle here. Adobe 1998 RGB represents this triangle. It's a smaller gamut of color space. And sRGB is the smallest, being this one right here. Okay, triangle. And then well, I've got an inkjet matte paper uh, output profile inserted in here as well so that we can see the differences in how they correspond to the different color spaces. So if we were working with um, print gamut spaces, what we could infer is that Adobe 1998 represents this triangle and our sRGB space is this triangle. The sRGB space clips off the green and the cyans and some blues and even some yellows and some reds. So if we compare the two, notice the compression of color gamut, as, as we call it. Now, if we were to work with Adobe 1998 and see its relationship to a matte surface printing space, which would be the destination space of the color of the ink and the paper substrate that it sits on, we could make a comparison and see that the HP 9180 matte surface paper really is compressed as well, and, it, and it's very small, and it doesn't have quite the color fidelity it has greens and cyans and blues and even some magentas and reds clipped from its color space. So if we were making a translation between Adobe 1998 as the source space to the destination space of the 9180 matte surface paper, what we would find is that we would lose this information. It doesn't fit in our box. Another thing to suggest is that if we start to use um, semi-gloss or glossy surface papers, there's an expanded color gamut because that paper isn't diffused into the surface as, as easily as the matte surface paper. So it sits on top and there's better color clarity, color quality, and basically we're just clipping a few of the greens and reds and a very few of the magentas here. So in comparison to Adobe 1998, Printing with a semi-gloss or a glossy surface paper will give us a better color rendering down the um, color management pike, so to speak. So starting from our source and moving to our destination, you can see that we can have a pretty good rendering into the color space for the print. Now, in Photoshop, what we want to be able to do is set up our settings under the Edit menu, Color Settings. And the default, if you've just launched Photoshop for the first time, is set to North American General Purpose 2, which is an sRGB space. Remember S? S is kind of a small space, and uh, we call it satanic RGB primarily. It's basically good for the web or uh, visual presentations through a projector, something like that. The next choice would be North American Prepress 2, which allows for Adobe 1998 as the color space of choice, and that is more uh, in line with working with uh, the CMYK environment, Prepress uh, environments, and so forth. So North American Prepress 2 would be your choice there. Our choice is going to be for most of our RGB workflow would be the Pro Photo RGB. The Pro Photo RGB is going to give us a huge color gamut, and when we distill down to those print spaces, um, we have more potential for a, for a better and more accurately produced image. Um, so this is the space is kind of what we kind of rely on for the high quality inkjet printers that have six, eight, or twelve printing colors. So let's. Uh, set up ourselves for Pro Photo RGB. Our color management policies will be to preserve the embedded profiles so we're alerted to any mismatches or if there's missing profiles or if we're pasting between documents we want to be alerted to the differences in color associated with those uh, environments. So let's say OK.